Hi Pico Brewers, Annie here to talk to you about fermentation. What I want to talk to you is about first is yeast. Now yeast comes in different forms. It comes in dry packages. Here's a couple of different manufacturers, some of my favorites. It also comes in a liquid form. It comes in a tube, another of my favorite. And it comes in smack packs and it also comes packaged in liquid form like this. This particular yeast, you just leave out on the counter about 30 minutes before you need it. The other liquid yeast that come in smack packs or tubes, just go ahead and smack this pack, put it on the counter, give it one good push, and you'll release all the yeast and the activator, and it'll swell up, and it needs about three hours. The same goes with the tube, just pull it out of the refrigerator, give it a little shake, and leave it out. Dry yeast can be sprinkled directly on top of the wort when it's cool to pitching temperatures. What I like to do though, instead, is I rehydrate it in a small flask, or if you don't have a flask, you can use a small ball jar, or anything that you use to put cooled water in, but make sure that the water is sanitized. Follow the dry yeast instructions before pitching it. When I talk about hydrating the yeast instead of just sprinkling it directly, sometimes you can lose up to 20 to 30 percent of the yeast right off the bat without hydrating it. So to be on the safe side, go ahead and hydrate it. And if you do hydrate it, you will find that you'll use less yeast than the whole package. If you have any questions at all, check the forms or email me. When I talk about pitching temperatures, all yeasts work at different temperatures. And what we've done in the recipe database is we've used all the specifications from the various yeast providers to know their optimal fermentation temperature. So when you're picking out your recipe from the library or you're putting in one of your own, when you select the yeast, depending on the manufacturer, there'll be a temperature range and you will have the optimal fermentation temperature. So the zymatic will cool down if you're using an immersion chiller or ice to that temperature. If you're chilling overnight, it doesn't matter. You will reach your ambient fermentation temperatures in about 12 hours. So then it's safe to pitch your yeast. If you pitch yeast, and I'll hold up this package of one of my favorites, dry yeast. If you pitch this in wort, which is your finished hopped wort from the brew cycle. When the wort is too warm, unfortunately you will kill the yeast. It needs to be pitched ideally below 80 degrees. But again, in the database with the recipes and from the manufacturer's specification, we'll know the optimal fermentation temperature. When you're brewing with lager yeast, you'll need to go much cooler. Lager yeast is a different style of yeast. It ferments from the bottom up. So for any of those questions about yeast, you can email me or you can check the forums. We're here to help. One of the things that I like to do when I ferment my beer is I use painter's tape and a marking pen. And I write on here what the beer is and which yeast I've used and the date. This gives me a really handy reference to know how to track my fermentation. Because I know what certain yeasts are and how long they generally take to ferment, I can always peek back at the type of yeast and the date so I have a general reference and a frame of when they'll be done. You can do this by using the forums for this information and also by going to those yeast providers specifications to give you a range of how long it should take. But in general, for ales, 10 to 14 days, and for lagers, at least 21 to 30 days. So here I have a Weizenbach that's finished. Now I'll know when fermentation is through because I have the date as a reference, and then I can also use a visual. I'll show you the inside of the keg. You'll see a small film on the top, which indicates that the krausen that has developed has completely dropped to the bottom. Fermentation is complete on a visual, but what I can do is measure it. For this, I use a hydrometer. 
A hydrometer measures the specific gravity. It measures the original gravity and the final gravity. But here I'm going to use it on the final gravity to know that my beer is done, to confirm my visual. So I take a bulb here. This is like a wine thief. I call it a beer thief. I use a stainless steel one. You can get them online or at your local homebrew shop. They're about 10 bucks. I have it in sanitized water because remember anything that goes in at this stage needs to be sanitized. So I'm going to carefully take off the lid and then I'm going to take a gravity reading. You might want to have a towel nearby because it can get a little sticky. I'm just pulling out beer and this is flat fermented beer. I put the lid back on. I don't want anything to drop in there. Then there's a scale on the side of each hydrometer. I'll look to see where the points are. I'll use this with the scale that's provided to me and the vital statistics on your recipe crafter. If it's in that scale for its finishing gravity, then you know the beer's done. Another good thing to do is to always taste it. You can drink it right out or pour it in a glass. It's just good, flat, unfermented beer. And from that phase, you can next take it to the transfer step. And we have the videos out for that.